Today on BRS TV Investigates, we find out if the Radeon XR30 Blue's smaller brother, the G5 XR15 Blue, might be the right fit for your tank and see if an array of multiple XR15s will outperform a few XR30s. Hi, I'm Randy with this Friday's BRS TV Investigates where we experiment on our own tanks so you don't have to experiment on yours. And today it's Ecotech's Radeon G5 XR15 Blue's turn to run the light testing gauntlet where we test in order to find out a BRS recommended settings that will help any reefer run this light optimally, whether using a single XR15 Blue for a tank like this or multiple XR15 Blue's for tanks like this. The overarching theme throughout our light testing approach is 100% that mounting height matters. And no two lights are the same. Some lights just need to be mounted higher than others to achieve an even spread and distribution across a two square foot area, while others show how they can get it done in just eight inches or less. So if you're one of those reefers looking to keep your lights low profile and closer to the tank, we're about to find out if this Radeon XR15 Blue can demonstrate the same performance we found when testing the larger XR30 Blue with one of the closest T5-like distributions we've seen so far. Along with that, I'm interested to find out if the extra 10 watts of the 100 watts from the XR15 Blue is going to result in a measurable difference in PAR output over other common 90 watt LED lighting options on the market, specifically as it relates to PAR output capabilities in usable spectrum ratios, where for both the Radeon G5 Blue models, the LED array itself has been optimized to allow the ability for each controllable channel to be ran at 100%, meaning I have the ability to use the entire wattage output of this light without sacrificing wattage from unused or underused channels. The proof will be in the data we gather today, so with that, let's discuss how many XR15 Blues we'll want to use to achieve our tank type PAR goals, then get to our first test to find their optimal mounting height. There's two main tank lighting goals that we base all of our light testing criteria on, which you'll hear echoed throughout today's test, and that is one, a thriving tank full of LPS softies, polyps, like torches, acans, scolies, toadstool leathers, green star polyps, mushrooms, zoanthids, and pallies. Our second tank goal is what most would call SPS dominated tanks that are packed to the gills with Acropora, Millipora, Montes, and other rainbow colored sticks. That said, for achieving that first LPS tank type goal in a two foot by two foot area like the 60 gallon tank, we found that one G5 XR15 Blue will get the job done, while in a larger four foot by two foot tank like this 120 gallon, we will only need two XR15 Blues. This is half the cost of using the XR30 Blue for the same application. As for that show-stopping SPS tank type, the data we're about to share will show you that you can get somewhat close to the PAR numbers that we're looking for using a single XR15 Blue in a 60 gallon tank. However, it just doesn't quite hit those ranges throughout the entire tank on its own. So we recommend either enlisting the help of a T5 hybrid supplementation like this one from Aquatic Life or upgrading the wattage output and going with a single larger Radeon XR30 Blue. Yet on a larger system where it makes sense to harness multiple fixtures, four G5 XR15s will get you there. Up next, we test the XR15 Blue to find the optimal mounting height, which for us means raising the light and testing inch by inch until we find the best spread possible without sacrificing more than 15% of light spill into the surrounding room. We begin this test with the light mounted at six inches off the top of the water and all channels, including the overall intensity set to max, where we can see a warm spot in the center of 410 par and an outer edge average of 178. With a total average of 251 par and a spread performance like this at such a low mounting height, this is by far as close to the gold standard T5 lighting as we've tested this close to the water, but I think there's room to improve. At seven inches off the water, we're beginning to smooth out the center to 339 and increase the outer ring to 196 with only a 4% reduction in overall average par. However, at eight inches, the outer ring at 201 has improved to within less than 80 par of the center at 278 with an 11% reduction to the average par overall and still under our efficiency loss threshold. With nine inches not showing any meaningful improvement, our BRS recommended mounting height for the XR15 Blue is eight inches off the top of the water, which is where we will mount them for the remainder of today's tests. 
Let's get to light spacing next and how far apart we should mount multiple XR15s, again with the goal in mind of finding the optimal spread and distribution across our four foot tank. We open this test first with our BRS recommended number of lights for LPS tank goals using two modules where we've mounted them evenly divided over a 48 inch length at 16 inches on center from the left and right edges. In this spacing, we find that the 162 par edges only come within 53% of the 306 center. And since our goal is 75% or more, we move the lights out further to gain spread and lessen par in the middle. At 15 inches on center, we've made a slight improvement to the edges being within 59% of the center. And with them spaced at 14 inches, we get closer to our goal with the outer edges now within 68%. It's not until we place the lights at 13 inches from the left and right edges of the tank where we finally meet our spread goal where the average par in the edges is now within 80% of the 255 center, meaning that this 13 inch BRS recommended spacing for two XR15 blues across the entire 48 inch tank, there's only an average difference of just 50 par. With our second tank type goal in mind of filling this four foot tank to the brim with branching SPS colonies, we start our spacing test with four XR15 blues mounted perpendicular and spaced evenly divided across 48 inches in 9.6 inch increments, which yielded a 67% outer edge par average of the center where there is 554 in the middle compared to 372 in the outside. Although this spread is not what we would consider to be optimal for what we're trying to achieve, if you're the type who likes to have evenly spaced lights over your tank, this is a viable option, keeping in mind that the center of the tank will be hotter than the outer edges and will scale proportionally as you turn down the light intensity. In order to find that optimal sweet spot for four fixtures, we move both outer XR15s and inner XR15s towards the edges of the tank, testing along the way, and we stopped when we found 83% of the average par in the outer edges within the center average at our BRS recommended spacing of eight inches and 17.2 inches from the left edge of the tank, and conversely, 17.2 and eight inches off the right edge of the tank. This spacing arrangement provided us with 483 par in the center and 401 par in the outer edges, and for our purposes, the ultra flat distribution we're looking for. So for the main components to optimally mounting Radeon G5 XR15 Blues, we now have the data we need to properly place and space them over our tanks. And the next question we look to answer revolves around creating a usable spectrum output for coral health, color, and metabolic function. We approach this portion of testing first by looking at the XR15 Blues spectrum offering and what the manufacturer suggests setting them to. And as I mentioned earlier, Ecotech makes this one pretty easy due to the way they've chosen the LED array for this light. In its most simplest form, the amount and color of each of the 50 LEDs was specifically chosen to closely match their widely popular AB plus spectrum, meaning we can run all eight color channels at 100% and use the overall point intensity to match our PAR goals. It doesn't get much simpler than that. Next in spectrum offering, we compare the XR15 blue spectrum to the ATI blue plus T5 bulb spectrum that we see here. And as we can see from this overlay, they're very similar in that violet to near UV range below 420 nanometers, while the Scion LED channel widens out the 490 spectrum range. The XR15 spectrum is not as wide in the upper portions of 430 to 460, but all in all, this is a pretty well-rounded spectrum offering, which gives our tank a more blue color, as many of us who mimic or have used the AB plus spectrum have grown accustomed to. The last spectrum test we look at before we get into specific setting recommendations for our two test tanks is a test to determine what type of shimmer we can expect from the Radeon XR15 and how well the new lens design will blend all 50 LEDs. We measured 10 spectrum data points under our test tank as the surface of the water creates ripples and refocuses the LEDs while we watch for major shifts and swings in the spectrum brand. And from what I can see, as we cycle through the 10 test points, there's a very small change around 430, but really nothing more than what I would consider to be normal. All right, now it's time to get into the heart of today's testing and use all the data that we gathered today to create our BRS recommended setting templates that you can use directly on tanks, just like our 60 and 120 gallon test tanks, 
or tweak slightly if you have tanks outside of those sizes. These recommended settings begin with our recommendation for a daily lighting schedule, which is as simple as starting with a nine hour total peak lighting period and then adding a 30 minute ramp up and ramp down time. Our first set of BRS recommended settings comes with that LPS softy and polyp tank goal in mind, where we try to provide 75 to 150 par in as much of the tanks as possible, which means for this 60 gallon cube with a single XR15 blue mounted at eight inches, we recommend setting the overall point intensity to 60%, and it's here that we tested 80% or 86 out of 108 data points in that par goal from top to bottom. If we're trying to achieve the same par throughout a 120 gallon system like this, we recommend spacing two lights in this configuration and setting their overall intensity to 45% to create 160 out of 198 data points, which is 81% of the entire tank between 75 and 150 par. To put this data into some perspective against the data that we collected for the G5 XR30 Blue, during that test, the larger XR30, we only used 20% overall intensity using the same number of fixtures over these same test tanks to yield nearly similar results. So it's obvious here that the XR15 can light an LPS tank more efficiently and better yet at roughly half the cost. If you have an LPS tank, I think the only reason I would go for the XR30 over the XR15 is if I was thinking forward to a future tank with a heavy SPS mixed reef tank or even with those wall-to-wall -wall SPS tanks in the future. Our BRS recommendations for that SPS dominated system is next, and as I mentioned when we were discussing how many XR15s are required to reach that 200 to 350 par goal, in this two square foot cube, our recommendation is to choose a tool more conducive to meeting those requirements, which means using a single larger XR30 Blue instead, or you could save a few bucks and couple the XR15 Blue with an Aquatic Life T5 hybrid fixture. I will say that if I wanted to use a single XR15 in this size of tank and place some SPS near the top, along with some LPS and medium light demand corals in the middle and bottom, this is definitely one of my top choices for accomplishing that, as long as I keep in mind that a PAR meter will keep me from overlighting those SPS corals or underlighting the LPS down below. However, when it comes to creating a stunning jam-packed SPS tank in a 124 foot system, our BRS recommendation is to space four G5 XR15 Blues in this arrangement, set their overall point intensity to 55%, and trust that if the tank is blanketed in as much of that 200 to 350 par as possible, where we tested 142 out of 198, or 72% from top to bottom. For those of you paying attention, Four XR15 Blues set up like this is roughly 33% lower cost over our recommendation of using three XR30 Blues for the same type of tank and size. Throughout today and across all of these light testing videos, you've heard me talk about goals for achieving SPS dominated systems or wall to wall SPS tanks or tanks filled with fields of rainbow colored acros. But what does that really mean? If you want to know the tips and what it takes to create an SPS tank of your dreams, you can find everything you're looking for in Ryan's ultimate SPS tank setup guide video right over here.